Okay, so for the second video, we're going to be doing one-step equation examples again, but this time focusing on multiplication and division. So first one, negative h equals 5. There's an invisible coefficient. Do you see it? Because actually, in front of the h is a 1. So negative h is equivalent or the same as the expression negative 1h equals 5. So in order to get h by itself, I'm going to have to ask myself what operation is happening between the negative 1 and the h. Since the number is in front of the variable, it's called a coefficient, which means that we are multiplying negative 1 by h. So the opposite of multiplying negative 1 is dividing by negative 1. Whatever we do on one side, we have to do on the other. The negative 1's cancel. I'm left with h. And 5 divided by negative 1 leaves me with negative 5. Let's check to make sure this is correct. My original equation was negative h is equal to 5. Rewriting it, we have negative, and remember, that's a negative 1. So negative 1, parentheses, shows multiplication. Negative 1 times negative 5. Is that equal to 5? Negative 1 times negative 5 is in fact positive 5. 5 is equal to 5, and we are correct. Next one. k divided by 3 equals 9. Remember, I want to get that k by itself. So what operation is happening between the k and the 3? If you said division, you are correct. k is being divided by 3. So what is the opposite of dividing by 3? You got it. Multiplying by 3. So I'm going to multiply the left side by 3. Whatever I do on one side, I also have to do on the other side. If I wanted to, it'll make it easier when we get into fractions. I can change the 3 on the left side to 3 over 1. Then in this case, the 3's cancel. I'm left with k times 1, which leaves me with just k. So we did isolate the variable. And then on the right side, 9 times 3 is 27. Let's make sure it's right. Our original problem was k divided by 3 is equal to 9. And we said for k, we had 27. So is 27 divided by 3 equal to 9? Yes, it is. So 9 is equal to 9, and we are correct. Next one. Negative 14.4 is equal to negative 0.6p. We have decimals, but stay calm. We can do this. So what's happening with the negative 0.6 and the p? What operation? If you said multiplication, you are correct. Negative 0.6 is being multiplied by p. So what's the opposite of multiplying by negative 0.6? You're correct. Dividing by negative 0.6. And whatever you do on one side, you also have to do on the other side. So we'll start on the left. Negative 14.4 divided by negative 0.6 gives me 24. Then on the right side, if I divide anything by itself, it always gives me 1. So negative 0.6 divided by negative 0.6 would give me 1 which would leave me with 1p, which just like we said before, the invisible coefficient, we can erase the 1, and it would still be the same as just p. So p and 1p are equivalent. So in this case, p equals 24. Are we correct? Let's find out. Our original problem, negative 14.4, is equal to 0.6p. Rewrite it with our solution. Which 
in this case we said was 24. Let's make sure is negative 0 0.6 times 24 equal to 14.4? And the answer is yes. So negative 14.4 is equal to negative 14.4, and we are good to go. The correct solution is, in fact, 24. So now the final two. Number nine is eight equals negative two-fifths C. What's happening on the side with the C? Well, we have a negative two-fifths in front of it. What operation is that? If you said multiplication, you are correct. So the opposite of multiplying by negative two-fifths is dividing by negative two-fifths. And the cool thing is, just like in the change and flip video, if I'm dividing by negative two-fifths, this would be the same as multiplying, so change and flip. So dividing by negative two-fifths is the same as multiplying by negative five over two. So you change it from division to multiplication, and you can flip the numbers. So in this case, I'm going to go with that. You could, if you're using a calculator, convert negative two-fifths to a decimal and divide by that. That is perfectly fine. So now I know I'm multiplying by a negative five over two. Whatever I do on one side, I also have to do on the other side. So negative five over two times eight. So we'll start on the right side here. We have negative two fifths being multiplied by negative five over two. So negative two fifths times negative five over two. We know multiplying, we can go straight across the numerator and denominator. So two times five, is 10, and 5 times 2 is 10, and a negative times a negative is a positive. So we're left with positive 10 over 10, which is equal to just 1. So now on the right side, I'm left with 1c, or I could just put c is equal to, on the left side, we have negative 5 over 2 being multiplied by 8, which 8 as a fraction would be 8 over 1. So negative 5 times 8 gives me negative 40, and 2 times 1 gives me 2. So negative 40 over 2 gives me negative 20. So C is equal to negative 20. So is our answer correct? Let's find out by checking. So my original problem is 8 equals negative 2 fifths C. Rewriting it, 8 is equal to negative 2 fifths times negative 20. And let's see, is negative 2 fifths times negative 28? Yes, it is. So 8 is equal to 8, and we know our answer is correct. So now the final one. n divided by 1.6 equals 5. I want to get the n by itself, so I have to do the inverse or opposite operation. The opposite of dividing by 1.6 is multiplying by 1.6. Whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other. So let me rewrite this, because that's kind of hard to see. So we'll start on the left side. Remember, I could put the 1.6 over 1, which lets me know these could cancel. I'm left with n times 1, which is 1n, or just n. So n equals, on the right side, 5 times 1.6, which
which gives me 8. So n is equal to 8. Is this correct? Let's find out. Write our original problem, substitute in our solution, and is 8 divided by 1.65? Yes, it is. We are correct. Nice work.